What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, the man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We're going to be talking through tonight, Friday's MLB slate. It was I had a good afternoon slate yesterday and a bad night slate is how my day went. Sheets, how did you do? And then uh... yeah, so so we talked about it's really funny. So we were sweating this a little bit. Um, I had that uh that that one lineup that was in the relay throw in the afternoon, and I I identified that the brick guy like had me or be cut be kinder. I can't be confused. Like kind of had me covered, so I had no chance, even though I was in eleven. Turns out I got like fourth though. Um, for like two thousand with that, which was uh, which is really good. Um, Wait, with which one? That 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 eleven dollar one uh, yesterday. You don't remember when we were talking about that when I had the Mariners? Oh, because oh, Dylan Moore. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah okay. the, I didn't realize that. Yeah. I, I knew. Well, I decided I couldn't beat that one guy, but I beat almost everybody else. That's so awesome. I got like we got like fourth or so in that, which was cool. Um, and then you know what helped was that was that Musgrove didn't get the win, which uh, which, which which helped me. Yeah. But it was weird. Everybody, everybody played Martin Perez and got there. <laughs> so, uh, and the, I think the winner had like Martin Perez and Verlander or something like that. It was like a crazy, I don't know what was going on. Anyway, um, maybe I'm getting the slates confused now. Maybe that. Oh, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was the morning one. That was the the Verlander was last night. But but yeah, but but last night I was I I, I told you I, I I locked in Hunter Green. He did well enough. Um, and. Uh, and uh, yeah, I spread around a little bit, and I just didn't didn't quite win. That's the best I can describe it. Uh, nothing, nothing really, no, no, nothing really bad happened. Nothing really good happened. I just never really was in particular contention, so I didn't really win anything. And I, you know, listen, I uh, can't do, can't uh, take every victory lap because you can't take a victory lap if you don't play him. But I did, I did, I did. You know, if anybody, if anybody out there played Kyle Bryce because of what I said and won money. Then, then you can thank me because I certainly <laughs> forgot to. I certainly forgot to do it myself. He basically, basically took took the Astros to the woodshed. Eight and two thirds, no runs, eight strikeouts. That's um, wild, man. So yeah, every once in a while. But what's I think what's interesting is we talk about the slate, and you know we've been talking about it the last week or two, but it's getting even more and more kind of like relevant and egregious and whatever. Is when you get to this part of the season, it reminds me almost of like the NBA, but not, it's even it's even worse. I think with baseball now. The way that you've been talking about this, the way that the, these these teams are managing their pitchers, you know, listen, it's really really good for them as a long term organization, but uh, a little bit a little bit fishy for fantasy. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but but you know what? It rewards the people you know that 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 do their homework and can kind of figure out you know which uh, which pitchers are actually getting full go and which ones are more inclined to you know to get to get rested. So, mm-hmm. um, and we kind of yeah, listen, you have examples of that every single day. So it's something that we have to keep on. Uh, keep uh keep on top of yep absolutely so we'll get into it today we'll go game by game if we pull up your screen yep. and um yeah it's i i do think these are you know the, the end of year slates are just very unique because of uh because of how people are managing and then how they're getting ready for the postseason in some cases the pitchers have longer leash or some they have no leash at all it's very tricky to try and figure it out but let's start off with houston baltimore a game that i don't think i want to touch any which way um that's where i stand on this one moving on all right i love it atlanta philly um nola to rizzi i uh, always have a soft spot for nola and with 59 degree in 59 degree weather with the winds blowing in at 12 miles an hour i think that i'm going to be playing her nola tonight yeah listen I'm, I'm, i hate to keep referring stealing whatever but Remember, I mentioned that it was another content person who's who's who who not turned me onto the Bradish play, but told me that you know that 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 was announcing that Bradish is again actually had kind of weird reverse splits or something like that. And then the same <laughs> comes up with the same the same observation today about Nola, which is interesting. Well, I, I don't Nola, think anybody can take a victory lap. Like everybody no victory knows lap, anything whatever. about baseball, like knows Kyle Bradish is like an up and coming future possible ace. You know what I mean? Nobody's yeah. coming up with something creative and he doesn't have a sample size large enough to come up with reverse splits or anything like I that. I guess so. So um, I, I, I don't, I, I don't know if I agree with that one. Okay. But, so, but in any case, the, the, the Noel observation is interesting is that Noel is always a good play and we always play him and he never seems to get there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, I don't agree with that at all, but yeah, well, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting. I, I actually like, like Noel a lot today. Um, I have uh, you can you can make a you can make a small slate or a big slate small here by just kind of reducing your pitchers a little mm-hmm. bit, and I'm probably I'm probably gonna end up doing that. Uh, I, I actually like Noel a lot here. Um, he's always has the possibility of giving up home runs and stuff like that, but um, you know he has he still has that hundred pitch plus leash, 
Um, and every once in a while, he'll have a uh, he'll have something happen. What happened here? Um, I mean, when, he's consistent and he's got his, the highest upside. Know, did he get hurt here? Why would he get pulled after 44 pitches and two innings? Yeah, he had a he had a strain of some sort. I think I don't. Remember. Oh, okay, okay. But he just threw that. He just pitched against Atlanta right after. That's right. Okay, so he's fine. So yeah, I have him as a top option. Um, is it my top option? Uh, maybe actually, I don't know. Uh, right, right now, uh, I have him as certainly near the top. His matchup isn't great, but I think he's one of those guys that if he's, you know, that he's grooving, he's grooming. You know, um, mm -hmm. sometimes he's not grooving, but when he's grooving, I'm not particularly concerned too much about the matchup. Um, yeah, me either. But I, but I think it's it's you know it's it's a tough enough matchup maybe to keep his ownership in check I guess I don't know, yeah. uh, or, or or we can dream. Anyway, I do like Nola quite a bit. Uh, he's one of my top options. And with respect to the hitting, mm, not really. I'm really not getting to much of any of it. Yep. Yeah. I, I I don't think there's any way you can play hitters in the right from the right side in this game personally. Um, that would be my take. I know I've made those pretty clear over the last few days. And by the way. I think every one of those games is at the under, and I don't think any righties have hit home runs in any of them. <laughs> so I actually think it's there's. I mean, it's it's 59 degrees. You got 12 mile an hour winds blowing directly in from left. It just feels like a spot where you don't really want to mess with it. All right. Well, what are we gonna do here? No. Because what, what what are your thoughts on Cole tonight? Because I no, I, no well, you said no. So let's talk about it again. We talk about the Yankees every day as far as this goes. The the Yankee marketing machine. They're trying to get. Judge to hit that 61st and 62nd home run at home. Um, didn't quite work out yesterday. He had a first of all, they gave him 14 runs the other day. That wasn't enough. And 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 yesterday he would he hit a fly ball deep. And um, and if you watch it, it was really weird. The cameraman almost messed it. Like he the, the cameraman almost missed like getting the footage of the 61st home run because right. he, something happened with the way he swung the camera. So, you know, you only got another couple of games before it gets shipped, not only out of, out of New York, but out of the country. Like he's, they're going to Toronto after this. So I don't know if the, I don't know if the Yankees marketing machine is going to allow that. We'll see. I mean, maybe, maybe Rich Hill's getting the call. Say, dude. I mean, honestly, they're just walking him every time. It's not like he's doing anything wrong there. He's had no, five no, I'm not he's saying there's doing anything wrong. Five walks you know? in the seven at bats. Like, yeah. It's it's tough. Tough to hit home runs when you, you're it's not getting tough. Hit. Rich, I don't know. Rich, maybe Rich Hill gets the call from the Yankee brass saying, dude, we really, we really need you to serve one up <laughs> here for him. I don't know. But as far as Cole goes, I mean, look, it's it's first of all, it's no, I would say no secret. This wouldn't be the first time the Red Sox got to Cole. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. if you play Cole as chalk, you know. Um yeah. Uh, with that said, I mean, this is kind of a data-driven business as daily fantasy sports, and Cole does rate to be a very, very strong play. Um, mm -hmm. And his ownership is going to reflect that. I can't, I myself can't separate Nola from Cole, um, and it looks as though the ownership uh, is not going to be able to be separated either. Like right now, I have them almost identical plays, given the price and everything, and I have them both at 35% ownership. Um, so I, I don't, I don't know. I can't separate them. I don't think anybody else is going to separate them. And it's just a matter of construction of how you build your, how you build your lineup. So, but I do like Cole. I mean, listen, the guy's got 40% strikeout ups, you know what I mean? Whatever. Yeah. And, and then he could also give up five runs in the first inning. I mean, it's just, that's, that's part of the way it goes. Do you have any preference between him and Nola? Do you have any lean aside from what I just said? I mean, where are you with this game? As of right now, I'm with no, I'm higher on Nola probably than, than okay. Cole. But it's pretty close. Um, I do like Cole. Uh, it's 58 degrees in where you are. Oh, it's freezing today. Yeah. It's so, freezing. But you do have a lot of wind blowing out. Kind of mm -hmm. like, the, I kind of think the Yankees are a little bit sneaky. Uh, but I, I I don't think I'm going to end up even doing that. I think really this is going to be Garrett Cole for me. And I think that's pretty much move on. But the Yankees are, are, are a long shot, large field tournament play for me. Well, let's talk about that. Because, I mean, on, on a Coors slate, we always have to give everybody except for Coors kind of a little extra extra kind of look-see, yeah. right? And I actually have the Yankees alongside of three other teams as, as it's kind of tied for the best non, you know, non-Padres, uh, you know, stack on the board. Mm -hmm. So, I want, I, you know, I, I don't even think they're they're particularly, you know, I don't say off the board, but but I don't, are they going to be that low owned as far as a, as a pivot off of San Diego? I don't know. I mean uh, – I don't uh, think they're getting any ownership. Okay, well, I'll I'll take a shot. <laughs> I'll take a shot. I, I'll yeah. take a shot at the I'll I'm take a you. shot at the uh, the Yankee marketing machine. Uh, Aaron Judge two home run narrative. So we'll we'll uh, 
we'll we'll see how that goes. And I do think he hits two in one day. I don't think he. I don't think he goes. I think I don't think he goes sixty one to sixty two. I think he oh, goes two in one. Day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I hope it happens today. Yeah. In any case, I, I definitely like the Yankees as a as a um, as a pivot stack. And uh, I mean, I, I you can't. You, I'm gonna say you can't not like Cole. You can't acknowledge. You can't not acknowledge the fact that Cole's one of the best plays on this. Yep. Um, we are in the same uh, same boat here. I, I agree. I, I'm, I'm more on the Yankees, even when I look at the ownership. Just I think they're, they're definitely an interesting stack. All right. Uh, let's look at the uh, the Toronto Tampa Bay game. Uh, the game that sort of you know was the the surprise, the only one that really went kind of off yesterday. Yeah, bad take by me. That was the one game I just said I wanted no I wanted no part of any of it. Um, yeah. I thought that, I thought that Tampa was gonna gonna put that whenever that whenever I see Yarborough for Tampa Tampa, I just have this part this part of my brain that clicks and I just assume the the other team's gonna get zero. I mean, you know, that's just that's the way I always think about whenever Yarborough. Not that I think anything of Yarborough. I just think of like the eleven other pitchers that are gonna be pitching in that game. Right, <laughs> kind of, but it, turned, it didn't work out that way. But Tampa said, "You know, screw you. We're gonna put a, put a, we're gonna put a ten spot up, which we've yeah. done like never this year." Yeah, and it's a uh, so uh, yeah. yeah. So 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 as far as today, um, once again, I mean, like, I, I I don't know what they're gonna do with Springs, um, but he's another guy that like you're just you're gonna you be, you better hope you don't play this team in the playoffs <laughs> as as usual. Yeah. Um, I think that Springs, boy, oh boy. I mean, if is he getting if he's gonna get even his whatever he usually gets, like up to 90 pitches or something like that, how how could he not be in play? I mean, considering he's that in play, terrible matchup for him, but yes. He, yeah, he's totally in play. I mean, I, I just don't know how he rates. I mean, I don't know how to rate him ahead of Cole or Nola. Well, no, you don't. But what I'm saying, but you could certainly use it as an anti-Giolito pivot if you feel like it, you know? Yeah. That's um, so I, I I, don't have Springs rated particularly high today, but I just a little bit too much respect for what Tampa's, what Tampa does. So um, if if I get to him, I don't think I will. I just I just know I won't. But but if I do, I'm not going to X him out or anything like that. And I'm not going to be surprised if he continues to have good games. Um, but like you said, I think Tampa and most of these teams, honestly, are preparing for the playoffs. Um, and uh, I don't know exactly what that means with respect to Springs here. Um, I, I I don't think there's anything to, to read into the situation for Tampa. I think it's very simple with Springs every time he pitches. If things are going well, they're going to let him throw 90 pitches. If things are not going well, they won't. So, summarize, I really don't like anything then from this game. Yeah. Um, I, I think this is a pretty pretty much a, a cross-off for me. I, I do think that the, you might have some some value options uh, like Aranda again in Tampa's order who might, you know, in second base, 2,600. Uh, I don't mind. Mitch White has not been right and can't strike anybody out right now. So um, that's the only thing I thought of, but I mostly am completely off of this one as well. I do think that, that Springs is reasonable. I just don't think that I'm going to end up doing it. That's the truth. Um, but I, th- I don't think it's the worst thing in the world you could do for sure. Uh, Cleveland and Texas. Um I have some interest in Texas here. Uh, it's not my favorite team to stack on a full slate, but I do think that they're, they're viable. And I think that they're being overlooked a little bit. Uh, so at, at no ownership, I have them as a large field stack. I don't have the, don't love them, but they are, they are one of the stacks that I think that I would take a, take a shot at. And they've also, you know, could potentially with young, have some, you know, a cheap bat in the lineup. Seager's cheaper than usual. Simeon is still reasonable and they both have been hot. Um, Josh Smith, depending on where he hits, would be another cheap option. I think Texas is, is an interesting off the board stack. That's basically all I have from this game. So talk a little extra about Seager just because, uh, you know, did you, you, you followed him intently with, when he was on Dodgers as, as wherever he goes, honestly, yeah. but, but so I had him as you may know yesterday in, in like the early slate and so many other times during the game, he was up in like kind of like high leverage spots. He would ground out. He would do this. I'm like, you gotta be freaking kidding me. And all and then just when I give up on him, bam, hits a home run in like yeah. the eighth or something like that. Yeah. Guy's sick. Yeah. No, <laughs> the guy's not. sick. And the guy is 4,900. Um, yeah. uh, he's just, a, he's listen, I don't know how he falls in the context of the slate, um, but him at forty nine hundred against uh, against somebody I don't know uh, who happens to be a righty. Uh, yeah, I mean I don't. 
maybe it's not the worst idea in the world to play to to, to, to use him to use Nathaniel Lowe. I like, read somewhere I was watching they Nathaniel Lowe is either one of the top or the top in the second half of the season in terms of it's either batting average or ice or something like he's had a really good second half. Uh, yeah, he really has. He's been red hot. Mm -hmm. So you get, you get him, uh, you get him from the left side, you get Seager from the left side. I mean, those are two really good plays. And then, you know what, the other guys that we already know how to play, like, like, like Garcia and, and, um, uh, young and, and John Jung. I mean, I think you might be honest something with this Texas idea. That's that's yeah. actually, I didn't even think of that. I think that's a, I think that's a really good idea. Yeah, and and and, and by the way, and, and I still don't know what to make of. Look, he, Cody Morris is young. He's talented. He hasn't pitched that much. Period. Um, in in minors and majors, and he has a wide range of outcomes. And I'm willing to to, to take a little shot on Texas here today. So. As of right now, I think that the Texas and the Yankees are the only teams that I would even consider stacking. It's, it is harder to find the stacks this time of year, especially when you've got a Coors game that you're trying to get away from. Um, I, could just, I could just picture, as I go into the next game, I can just picture like the, the meeting. I don't, I don't know if last year was a contract year or this year was a contract year with uh, Lucas Giolito. I can picture like his agent like going into the, going into management and saying, I'll tell you what, we'll take, we'll take, you know, we'll, we'll concede on this point, but you have to promise us that we're going to, you're going to work our rotation so that my man gets literally the easiest matchup every single time he takes them out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And because what that's going to do is going to give me a better chance to get there. He's going to get more DFS players to play him. So he gets a little more publicity in general, <laughs> you know, and they're like, okay, you got it. So what do we get? He, he always pitches against the Tigers. Okay. Yeah. And there's Oakland, Kansas city. You, you know what I mean? Like another Detroit. Okay. I guess Detroit must be in the division or whatever it is. Yeah. And there's another Detroit, but he always gets Detroit. He's always projects through the roof i mean as as because because specifically detroit's just the worst against righties and i he literally has not gotten it i mean like it's it's it's, uh, it's i mean for his price I, I don't know if that's right like 7700 he's basically always getting there. you could argue that he's always getting there or that he's never getting there well uh, let me ask you this it's I, not, I tell you you're right he's not quite getting there sorry but how about this how about, this? How about i say that lucas giolito is going to be 30% owned. He's going to be higher than that. <laughs> well, okay. Let me tell you, this. I'll give you, uh, let's say Lucas G. Lito is going to be 50% owned. And how about I give you a number he hasn't gotten in a while? How about I give you 20 fantasy points? No, I know. I know. And then it's a question is, do you, do you take it? Um, I have G. Lito behind Cole and, and Nola myself. I do have interest in G. Lito. I, I'm, I'm still going to, you know, again, I, I understand that with the ownership, it's, it feels kind of fishy. I am still going to take that chance and, and play. Well, him. well, I will say that. I mean, maybe you disagree with this. I say that the pairing of Giolito Cole or the Giolito Nola, they're be popular. I mean, you, I, you, you can't play that with, with say the Padres. I don't like, think that's right for these kind of slates to say that. Like, okay. I just think okay. the slate's too big. Um, maybe with specifically those two with the Padres, I guess that that's fair enough, but I don't know, like outside of the Padres and yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, just, I guess, I guess you're right. Just, just the Padres though. I don't yeah, think that's what I meant. Just the Padres. Everybody else is going to be whatever. Yeah, I don't think it matters any other stack, but I think you are right in this case because it's going to be more extreme ownership on the Padres than we're used to even seeing for, for cores. Um, yeah, I guess you're right on that one. sheet. sorry about that. And I do think you have to play a couple of Tiger stats. Um, uh, I'm not playing in this weather. It's not worth it. Oh, what's the weather like there? Just it's it's terrible all, all over that part of the world. It's, the wind's blowing in only six miles an hour, but it's 60, 62 okay. degrees. Um, I just don't. I mean, you know what I mean? Like every all the reasons we fade San Francisco games and all these things. It's okay. should be treating these stadiums basically the same right today. Not just because it's cold, but even even that six blowing in the, the, both Chicago stadiums. People forget the wind. The wind tends to affect a lot more over there. Any interest in? Um, I mean, I, I don't have any, but just because we we're you know talking about these other teams, and any any interest in in Erod against the White Sox? Or we usually like to play righties against them. Right? No, I I would I would like to play the White Sox if it was a, any reasonable conditions, but um, at their prices and the situation, I, I think I'm just going to avoid it personally. Okay. And and I and I and I'm you know look, we're going to about to get into Coors, where it's also blowing in 11 miles an hour from left center field. Um, and it's going to be so crazy high owned, but it is Ryan Feltner. I, I would prefer to try to play the the, the San Diego lefties, um, Soto, Profar, Switch Hitter, um, Cronenworth, 
Josh Bell. I just I don't like playing righties, especially chalky ones. And I and I will not I will make a rule that I do not have any five man San Diego stacks tonight. Yeah, San, I mean, just for you know, those watching the first time, San Diego is rating to be the top stack on the board. Uh they're in cores and they're they're expensive enough. Uh they're also rated to be the highest owned team uh by a decent amount. And all these cores that all these core slates, you have to make that kind of decision of 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 do you wanna play play guys that everybody else is playing and especially when you have these pitchers that you kind of want to play um cole nolan like, look let's face giolito's certainly good value right so if yeah. you want to play some combination of those three um and you play padres what you do i mean you just again you just put pressure on yourself to be perfect you know and and, and being perfect in baseball being perfect in anything dfs is tough but being perfect in baseball is really really difficult so um if you play the padres i would do something in my opinion, I would either play different pitchers or as Bobby's suggesting, like just play different Padres, you know, just, just, just play, play the guys who might not be as, as highly owned. Or like you said, take a stand with respect to the, uh, to the handedness, you know, like you, uh, like, Bob, like Bobby only wanted to play the, uh, the lefties right in this, mm -hmm. in this, uh, situation. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I think you could do that too. Um, but yeah, the Padres do rate to be the best play, but in terms of, con of, of roster construction for GPPs, you know, you, you want to do something different. Hey, listen, if you play cash, I would I would honestly recommend you play either e some combination of the three, Giolito, Cole, and Nola, probably Giolito with one of those two, and then play a bunch of Padres. You know, it certainly makes sense to me. Um, but in GPPs, I do think you need to do a little bit something different. Yep. Um, I, I, it, it's going to be such heavy chalk. It's, it's, it, it is a little bit warmer today in Colorado, but like, I, I don't know, man. It's just the, the heaviness of the chalk. It's it's going to be a secondary stack for me only. I I just can't do it at this ownership level. Like I mean, if you're going to be like five times on more than anybody else, it's really really hard to justify in baseball doing that for me. Um, but I but I but you know, with all that said, I I do think the Padres are very reasonable. Like I, I think they're they're in a good spot, and I, I like the matchup against Feltner, Feltner. I just would prefer the lefties, um, and I will keep it to three man mostly. The we the weather the weather in this next game is is very fishy, um, and I think I, I think it's the only game where weather is an, is is particularly an issue. Mm -hmm. um, but it is it is one that is that is decidedly orange at least this early at least this early, and uh, you know it's something you have to keep an eye on. Yeah, it's it's a little an I won't say annoying because I do think that Otani would be kind of a cool uh, yeah. a cool pivot, pivot you yeah. know. Um, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it with, 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 re with weather risk. It just, it's just not, you know, just not my thing. Um, I also would, would, would ask you, I mean, again, in my own voice, like who, who is El Varland? Um, just because he's, he's really, really cheap, uh, whatever it is. Um, I, I didn't really do a lot of homework on it. He's projects like all these 5,600 project. You want to know the truth, you know, like, uh, uh, that he's not the worst play in the world. I don't know why you'd want to do why you'd want to do it today, but it would be worth just for content purposes, like asking you if you knew who he was, if he had a particularly good strikeout prop or anything like that. But for me, I, th I think there's way too much weather risk for me to get involved in this game. Yeah, I mean the weather risk also is the reason why he would project well because um, if you're going to throw 90 pitches in 50 degree weather with winds severely blowing in, you're going to be reasonable, you know and 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 he is you know he's uh he pitched a tiny bit of triple a um i know that that he that there there was like some hype around him before but i don't know what that was or whether i was whether i missed no that's right he's the young guy yeah he's super young um re, uh, good k numbers in the minor leagues does tend to walk too many people i i mean yeah you could consider him if the weather was was a go ahead i i don't think that you necessarily need to build that way, but I I do agree with you that if this game played, I, I think I'd be more interested just in trying to play Otani as a pivot off the other guys. But I am very concerned with the weather here, so I'm also and I have zero interest in any of the hitting, so I'm ready to just move past it if you want to. Yep. Um, but I mean, again, if it plays, that could be something. Um, all right, so uh, this is a tough one for me. Um, I'm I'm really desperately trying to find my other stacks. And this game is, uh, to be honest with you, I, I, I sort of considered both stacks. And I don't like to, th I like Singer is really good. I don't want to like get crazy. Um, 
I don't know, man. I, I guess it's probably going to end up being a, a mostly a stay away for me, but I don't think there's anything wrong if you want to play the Royals. Um, it's at least, you know, 66 degrees without the wind blowing in. <laughs> like, I guess that's, it's just a really ugly day of games. So this is, uh, I wanted to try and find something just from that, from that standpoint here, but I, I don't think I'm going to be able to do anything. And, and I, I don't like the matchup enough for Singer to play him. So I think I'm probably going to skip him too. Um, I don't know. I, I think that, I think the KC is an interesting, uh, maybe that maybe a little further down the line stack than the Yankees in Texas, but they are interesting a little bit to me. I love KC as a value stack today, actually. Okay. Okay. If, 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 for no, if nothing else is a compliment to something else, maybe you would do. Mm -hmm. you know? Um, I, I like it a lot. I like, uh, I like wit. I like Taylor. I like Eaton, Pascantino. Um, mm -hmm. Melendez is more expensive, but but uh, but uh, even Dozier, who's not the greatest, but whatever. But I have them rated like as a pretty decent value that that's not going to be owned uh, right now. Um, so I I, uh, I I definitely agree with you. I mean, I like that. As hey, look, they're all going to feel kind of uncomfortable, like you said, in sixty five degree weather. You know what I mean? But if you're looking for something else to do, I think you can, you could do a lot worse than play Kansas City. Um, and and Brady Singer again, like. Uh, like you said, I mean, you hit it right on the head. I mean, Seattle's not a team you want to mess with necessarily, but Singer has, you know, he has, he has some serious ceiling in that, in that arm of his, you know? Yeah. Um, and again, when you have a slate where, where, where you're going to get a 40% on plus Lucas Giolito, there's just, there's just no reason for me to believe that Singer can't outscore Giolito by 10 points. And a lot of variations, you know? Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. And you'll pay a little more for him. And I don't think anybody, I was anybody, right? I hate when people say, that. no one's going to play him. Obviously, someone's going to play him. Okay. But, but I don't think that many people are going to play him. So, yeah. Uh, I, 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 th I think I might end up maybe holding my nose and playing singer. Like if, if I, if I, if I, for whatever reason decided I wanted to play the Padres, for example, mm -hmm. um, and I didn't feel creative enough to structure them in a way that, that they would be low owned, I, I, I would do some, some crazy cross crazy stuff like like a like a singer springs or something like that you know or or you know if the weather's better like a singer otani or something like that um but uh yeah i think singers definitely be considered on a slate where you're looking for for for, for low and stuff and i think kansas city is definitely a team that you're looking at when you're looking for low and stuff also yeah i i, I mean I think those are all all very reasonable points. I want to just point out, I think it's interesting that like, and it's obviously they do it by a different system, but Sabersim has this like from the actual projected run total, like the Vegas line. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, Sabersim has Seattle's run total, like a f more than a full run higher, which is pretty, pretty large for what they usually do. Just wanted to throw that out there. Um, but I, but I agree with everything you said and, and, I'm I I don't like this situation. I, I mean, I'm looking at it. It's like, yeah, it sounds cool to play the Royals because there's some cheap bats and all that stuff. The Royals, like, if you took Taylor, Dozier, Massey, and uh, Pascantino, they have like they like have a combined like one percent home run rate against lefties. They're like a little league team. <laughs> it's like ridiculous. Like, it, I mean, Pascantino can hit home. He's got power, but n none of these guys have hit lefties for power all season long. Um, except for Oliveras, who's only had 10, you know, 30 at bats, but it's just, so it's just interesting. I, I do think they're interesting. I just think that like, I don't want to make them my primary. And, and again, I'm having a really hard time today getting a little bit different. I think that I might be playing, you know, Yankees by the end of the day, because I, I just, I, I'm sort of, I'm sort of stuck a little bit on finding stacks. I really like, I like the, I like the Texas, I like the Yankees and I like KC, but none of those feel all that exciting to me. So one of those weird days so far. Um, all right, you ready to talk about the next one, which is I yeah, I'm ready to talk program. about uh, I'm ready to talk about Carlos Rodon's workload. Um, they they decided it would be a good idea, yeah, to I'm not some sure. five innings and 71 pitches before pulling him out of that game. Um, now again, 29.5 fantasy points, you know, whatever, but I don't see any particular need for for them to let him pitch a hundred pitches for the rest of the season, you know, um, yeah. that, uh, you know, you know, San Francisco better than anybody. I, I don't know, but uh, yeah. so I'm, I'm going to be off of that. Um, I, I, this Tommy Henry guy coming off a of two straight negative perform negative ones. No one's no one. Very few people are going to play him. Uh, and, and maybe, you know, you get that San Francisco 
BS lineup. Um, I don't think I need to do Tommy Henry on this slate, um, but I just want to know he did show up as a point per dollar play. So there's that. Um, as far as stacking goes, I don't think I'm going to get to either of these teams. Yeah. Um, I, I actually think the Giants are, I guess I, I have to consider them like, there's just nothing to do on this slate. And I, the bullpen's terrible. I think Tommy Henry sucks. Um, you have some guys who are specifically good against lefties. The problem is how long will they be in the game? But Estrada should stay in. Um, Slater, Longoria could go either way. Flores will stay in. J.D. Davis will probably be pinch hit for if after that. Um, VR will stay in. I like I like the Giants actually today, so I, I do have the Giants as one of the stacks that I'll be that I'll be if, if I can't figure out what else to do, and I think that's going to be the case. I think the Giants are are just as good as anything else, to be honest with you. And I I just wish that we and I'll double check the Arizona uh, roof because it's it's the getting the time of year where they maybe you could see it open every now and then, and it it affects things in a major way. So I'm just going to see if I can maybe get a boost. It looks like it's going to oh wait it's open tonight. Ooh. Now I like the Giants even better. Okay. And the Giants might be what I end up with tonight, which feels really, really weird. But um, yeah, I like the Giants. Okay. Let me ask you a question. May I interest you, kind sir, in some Chris Bassett revenge um, going back to Oakland? Um, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I, I have a really I, I don't, I don't I don't see you trampling over over the masses to, 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 to support it, though. Uh, it's a good um, matchup. Like, I mean, why not? Like, I, I don't have any problem with it. I just, for some reason, it doesn't, he never, it never excites me to play Chris Bassett in general. Um, he does a long leash. Uh, he's going to be lower owned than everybody else in this price range. I think that's, I think it's totally, a re, I, you know what? I actually think Bassett belongs on my list. He belongs on, the, make it, instead of a three man pitching pool, I'll make it four with Bassett, but I don't feel especially excited about it. And, and I tell you what I do like, I think that this might be the thing to do is the late games. I think that, I think that the Mets might be might be one of my favorite things on the slate. Well, before before we, we before we take a detour of narrative street for a second, yeah. Um, should we consider um, was Sean Murphy his catcher when he was in Oakland? Oh, the whole the whole thing. I just think we're getting too creative. I don't, I don't. dude. It's your creation. I don't know. I don't yeah, know but like like against bad pitchers and okay. Or, I don't, I'm know, just I'm just small slates. Just... Not not 15 gamers. But right. I think I think Murphy on his own is always you know he's fine. Okay. But, but yeah, no, that is a good point. I mean, I, I do always talk about that. I just, okay. I just did. I wouldn't think about it on this particular slate against a good pitcher. But hey, look, it's it's seventy seven degrees in Oakland. What is going on in the world? Every all the good weather now is in the places where it's never good weather, and all the bad weather. It's just it's very strange. Um, yeah, I think I don't know. I think I think I think I, I think I like the basket play. I, I think that the um, I think you're right. I think that they need to win, um, or at least they'd like to win. Uh, I think they want, you know, they're going into Oakland. I think they're expecting to 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 win all these games. Um, and uh, he's going to be not going to be unowned, but he's going to be half the ownership of those top guys. Maybe less, yeah. And uh, I mean, like you say, who who in their right mind really is going to play basket over Nola? Two hundred more. Um, well, you know what? In fairness, I mean, I know it does have the worst matchup, right? So you, I think Bassett will get played. You know, I don't think I don't think I'm saying anything particularly off the wall here. Um, I, I, I really don't think he's going to be that popular, though. I really, I really think that you could play him with Nola too, um, if you wanted to save from the Cole thing, because while Cole has yeah. his upside always, it is you know is a team that's given him some trouble over the years, and he certainly has blow up ability. You know, can can blow well, up. I have another thing to ask you, and we, we we dismissed this pretty quickly, or at least I did. You probably thought of it, but um, you know the Yankees are kind of locked into their spot right now, right? So why exactly would Cole have to be pitching 110 pitches? Cole tends to just at this point with a guy like Cole, I actually would assume that they would be keeping him the same. It's not like he's coming back from an injury like Verlander was, or you know a couple right. of starts. He's he's fine. He's good to go. And to me, that just feels like 100 pitches. But it is a good point. I mean. Um, I, I there's they, they, I've never seen Garrett Cole pitch in a game, and they've had this situation come up plenty of times before, where he's like limited to like 80 pitches. I just have never seen it. Right, right. And and every pitcher is different. It's not like we you know we can treat him the same way we can, you know, Urias or actually Urias is a bad example this year, but any pitcher for the Dodgers in general, um, uh, Dustin May or whatever. I, I just I just think he's going to pitch his 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 time, and if 
if he's going, if it's going well, he's going to throw 105 pitches. If it's not going well, he'll throw 90, <laughs> you know? Do you uh, think, do you think, as we get to this last game, I'm going to start off the analysis as last game this way. Yeah. Do you, it does, uh, is Haney going to make the playoff starting rotation for the oh, Dodgers? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he is. Okay. I think, I mean, I would imagine he is. Like, okay. um, it, it's, 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 he's a really weird pitcher because he strikes everybody out. Like, he literally has got an insane strikeout rate. Yeah. Um, but he just gets himself into trouble over and over again and um, doesn't really have that long a leash. I could see him starting the, like, the game that's sort of a semi bullpen ish game. Like, right. Which makes four, sense. Four or five. But it's not like I'm, I am I don't know if they're going to like overly extend them, but I think if it's going well enough or poorly enough, I could see either any route possible. I'm not playing him either way. Well, I have a question. What's what's the weather like in uh, nice. in, in, in Dodger Stadium tonight? 77 degrees. Wind well, may, maybe I'm just being lazy, but you know, with all this other weather and all this coldness and all this and all this nonsense, I, I get I get Jesus Quintana against the Dodgers and um, and then. Why am I just not playing them? Because Quintana is one of the lowest strikeout rates of anybody in baseball. Um, doesn't doesn't strike people out. Doesn't right. walk people. Um, but you know I'm saying, why am I not just playing the Dodgers? You're just doing it because then you're just wanting to play the Dodgers. Like there's it's it's it, and there's no other stacks. And I and that's that may be viable enough tonight. I'm just there's nothing about Quintana. I've seen it. Everybody's tried to do it every step every time he pitches, and he doesn't get blown up. He doesn't give up home runs. He doesn't walk people. That's a really hard guy to stack against. Um, so if you're going to do it, I, I I probably would like a smaller stack to, as opposed to a bigger one. Uh, I I I don't know. I, I they don't really have a ton to play for the Cardinals. I guess you could maybe see some weaker relievers. Um, Cardinals are sort of basically om- almost set in there. I mean, they haven't won the division yet, but they're they they're like they're in the same place the Yankees are. Um, I don't know, man. I, I I definitely could see it just on the fact that it's the Dodgers, but I. They haven't been hitting. Quintana doesn't strike, you know, give up home runs. But could they go off? Of course. So I, I think that I personally would rather side with the Mets, who I believe are in a much better matchup against Irvin than than the Dodgers here. And I, I just that's that's just where I'm at. Um, although I will say that you know even even Cole Irvin has been a little better lately. But but he gets hit really hard when he gets hit. So I would rather try to pick on that guy um, than I would try to pick on Quintana. But Look, it is the Dodgers, man. Um, so there's no problem. I have no problem with it, but it's just for me. It's I just have them a little below the other teams. Hey, I, I hate to do this to you, but I want to go back to the yeah. first game. Let's do it. Because um, we 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 said we're not playing anything. Are we? Are we dismissing Houston too quickly? Uh, probably. It's it's probably a, a little bit. You know, I mean, like going back. You know, we really haven't like found anything great. You know what I mean? Right. Um, Something that we feel great about. I agree with that. Um, it, for what it's worth, wind blowing in nine, nine, oh. nine miles an hour in Baltimore, six degrees from left field. It's just ugly weather. Um, I, I I have no problem. I would again, I would just say if with Houston, I prefer the lefties, which is really just the two bats, uh, Bregman and Alvarez. But um, you know, Tucker. I'm sorry, Tucker and Al- Alvarez. Excuse me. Um, I, I, I'm just not getting to it. I, I, right. I think, I think I prefer, I think my favorites right now are San Francisco and the Mets, the Yankees and Rangers, and then maybe you find the value from KC, but that's where I'm at today. And that feels really, really weird to say. <laughs> that's what, those are my favorite stacks. Who are your, who are your favorite Padres? Who did you mention Soto Profar? And who's the other one? Cronenworth and Bell. Cronenworth. But again, this is you guys. This is a you know, this is the end of the season slates. They're they're a little weird. So we're right. Be, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting. We'll be I'll be live at six, and we'll see what kind of lineups we have released. Because as of right now, I, I'm genuinely considering just going crazy with San Francisco, the Mets. San Francisco, huh? huh? I got to look at that again. You're not worried about the usual stuff we worry about with San Francisco. What? Is, oh, the pitch hit. I am, but like. You know, I gotta find something. They you know, just... let's go. Let's go. Let's go back to that then. Let's spend a couple of seconds on that. So, okay. so San Francisco. Let me just pull their lineup up a second. So, who would you, who would again, who would you play for the San Francisco? You know, keeping in mind, you you'd love to get all the at bats if possible. So, who are they up against? Hold on, let's let's pull this game up. So they're playing against um, Henry, who is a Left. lefty. So I guess you'd want to play the lefties, right? Because they don't, they don't play left, they're not going to let that many lefties hit. 
No, but I was going to say, if they did let a lefty start, then you know that he's probably that, not going to he's gonna stay in there, right? I mean, yeah, but I, I think that, I mean, I think they only would let one lefty play. Okay. So who, so who do we got? Probably Yastrzemski, but I, I don't even think that's even a good play. Um, well, Peterson, they'll play. I mean, no, he'll never, he never plays against lefties. Really? Um, he might, yeah. he, occasionally they'll give him a spot start and it's possible they would because he's had a good year, but he never plays against lefties. So, so who would be your favorite San Francisco's? Uh, the top seven. <laughs> Estrada. I'm not, I'm not going to worry about a pinch hit risk in a game where I'm wanting the team to go off. Uh, I just can't, but Estrada. Is. Slater, I don't like, I don't like Slater as much as everybody loves to play Slater because he's always cheap. Well, he's got three home runs and 120 at bats against lefties. Let's not like go crazy with him. Um, I do like Estrada, uh, JD Davis. These are guys are probably pinch hit risks, but that's who I, I mean, that's, I guess Estrada VR, who probably is less likely to get pinch hit for, um, Longoria, you like him? It's fine. Don't have a, don't, I, I, I think he's good. I think he's, I think he's fine. Flores is the best one. Um, probably, but Joey Bart, I like at his price, assuming that he's in the lineup tonight. He's got massive power. He's hit lefties. Joey Bart really again. That's right. <laughs> he's hit lefties really well this year. It, it really depends on how their lineup comes out. Like if they if they if they lead off Lewis Brinson, I'll play Lewis Brinson. Yeah. Oh, the aforementioned Lewis Brinson. But if he but if he's batting ninth, I'm not I'm not touching it. But I I just think that they're interesting. I it just it's just such a not not a fun team to stack on a full slate. I, I I'm gonna have to question myself. Do I really want to do this? They are really cheap for what it's worth. Mm -hmm. So I think that they're interesting, and I think that with the roof open against Henry and a bad bullpen behind him. It's definitely a spot I could see getting to the Yankees. And the same question has to be asked on the other side. If you're really playing, you know, if, you, if you're trying to win games, you you know, why would you bring in a righty to face San Francisco's best hitters who are lefties? <laughs> you know what I mean? So maybe they will, maybe will they will use the lefties out of their bullpen. I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. Maybe I'm hoping too much, but I, 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 it's not that I think they're this incredible thing. I think that maybe if, if you're uncomfortable with them, the Mets, Texas, and the Yankees, I think are all very reasonable today. That's that's what I would end up doing. Today. All right. So let me let me let me let me end it this way. So as far as my pitching goes, the good plays are are Cole Nola Giolito. The plays I might play, also, just based on what I've been saying, is 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 Bassett and uh, and or Springs. Those would be the guys that are not going to project all that great um, relative to the other guys, and just in the name of getting different. Those are two places I might go. And as far as the hitting goes, San Diego, you know, obviously the best play. But the guys that might play, I would say the Yankees, the Dodgers. The good thing about KC is you could double pay up for pitching um, and get that working. But then again, don't forget, I make sure you have somebody that could actually hit the ball on Kansas City if you stack it. Like, like right. make sure you, you don't make it all Massey, Pascantino's. Dozers yeah. or whatever. Put like either Melendez or Perez or Witt or maybe hopefully two of them. You know what I mean? Like if you're going to stack them, I mean, you want to at least get some kind of opportunity to score more than four runs. Yeah. Um, and maybe go back to maybe Houston. So Yankees, Dodgers, Houston, Casey, and I am definitely going to take a look at this uh, San Francisco situation. Yeah, I do. And and uh, it's, it's it, you know, it's, I, I, it's a really strange one for me. I'm only using four pitchers, Nola, Cole, Giolito, Bassett, no San Diego full stacks and mi mixing out the rest of my stacks with San Francisco, the Mets, the Yankees and Texas. But I will probably um, end up harnessing a little closer in on just one of those and I'll, I'll have those answers by six Eastern. Oh, and this is very interesting. So I went and I did make a little note because I, I always make a note to talk about FanDuel. And then five seconds after we close down the, the, the screen, I'm like, damn it, I forgot to talk about FanDuel. So I actually remembering, first of all, I do not don't have any difference in the pitching. I still have Cole, Nola, and Giolito as FanDuel plays. The one thing, wow, this is so sick. The only thing that's that's notably different in FanDuel is in my stacks, aside from you know, the same San Diego, LA, and New York, the next stack on my list is actually San Francisco from, okay. hey. on FanDuel. Um, so I figured I would throw that, throw that in there. Oh, yeah. I forgot the I forgot the other the other pitcher I might play is the um is the Brady Singer. That's another one that I, that I might that I might try. Oh yeah, um, I think it's interesting. I, I think Singer, both Singer, it wouldn't be that surprising if Singer and Springs ended up winning the slate, and they're both yeah. going to be basically unowned. Yeah. All right. Well, all right, this is definitely a weird slate. It's that time of year. We've only got a couple more weeks of this, if that. Um, 
And uh, then we'll get to some football this this weekend. Anyway, good luck to everybody. And uh, we'll see you guys at the top of the leaderboards.